Okay, so the newest generations of Fire TV Stick, the 4K and 4K Max Generation 2s have been launched. And along with it, it's the first time we've seen Fire OS on any Fire TV Stick device. But this has come with its problems. And unfortunately, a real biggie has reared its head, which means that some apps just won't work with Fire OS 8 properly. This is due to permissions. I'm not going to go into full details about it, but I'm going to show you how you can overcome some of these problems. Now, I've got to say, first of all, thank you to AFTV News for highlighting this. If you want more details about the problem, then head over to their website. That's AFTVNews.com. They've got all the details in depth there on how to resolve this problem and how this problem comes about and all the technical details about it. But this video is gonna really show you the basics. For those of you that don't really need to know why, but just how to fix it. So like I say, go over to AFTV News to have a look at all the details there. But in the meantime, stick around. There's more details coming up. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So as I say, some apps are struggling to work with the new 4K and 4K Max second generation sticks because of a permissions problem in Fire OS 8, which means it can't access all of the parts of the system that the app needs to. Now, this generally is causing issues with many media players and file manager apps, including that popular media player that begins with a K and ends in OD. It's also affecting some of the popular apps that I've reviewed in the past, such as Explore and Total Commander. Although ES File Explorer isn't affected and that's because it's got special permissions because it's an older app. So you may well be able to get around this issue by using older versions of the apps. But obviously this is not recommended because you're going to be limited with features and there could be potential security issues by using older apps too. So this method is going to show you a safe and secure way of getting around this particular problem. Hopefully at some point in the future, Amazon will resolve this problem. But in the meantime, we've got to resort to uh, some backdoor methods to try and get it working again. So what we need to do, first of all, is we need to download Downloader if we haven't got it already. So go to the magnifying glass, down to search, middle button, and just start to type Downloader. Once you see Downloader underneath the on-screen keyboard, highlight it, middle button on the remote, and then highlight this orange Downloader icon, middle button. Middle button again, to start installing. Hopefully this shouldn't take too long. It's just middle button that as well. It might not come up on yours. Okay, so once it's uh, ready, it will should say open or done beside it. So press the middle button on the remote control to open it. Now you must allow downloader to access photos, media and files on your device. So hit allow middle button, hit it again, the middle button to get rid of the quick start guide and then press the back button a couple of times until we come out of it and we want to go right the way back to the main menu. So keep hitting the back button until we're back to the main menu. The next thing we want to do is we want to go across to the settings cog and then go down to my fire TV middle button and we need to try and find developer options. Now, if like mine, you haven't got developer options, then go into about middle button and then highlight the name of your device. As you can see, mine says fire TV stick 4K. Yours may say something different. Highlight that and then just keep pressing the middle button until you see no need, you're already a developer. Then press the back button once and if by magic, developer options should appear. Go into developer options, press the middle button on the remote control. And if you've got apps from unknown sources like I have there and it's switched off, go down to it, middle button on the remote control, middle button again, and there you go, it's switched on. If you've got install unknown apps instead of apps from unknown sources, then all you need to do is highlight install unknown apps, middle button on the remote control, go down to downloader, and if it's switched off like mine, middle button, and that turns it on. Press the back button once, then we need to go up to ADB debugging, and if that's switched off, 
middle button on the remote control and that turns it on. And then we just press the home button on the remote to go back to the main menu. The next thing we need to do is we need to go to the magnifying glass and down to search middle button. So we need to type developer tools. So let's just do that developer. And as we're typing it, in actual fact, you should see developer tools menu appear underneath the on-screen keyboard. When you see that middle button on the remote control, and then we need to select this one here, developer tools menu, the one with the arrow in the top right hand corner. So highlight that middle button and then middle button again to start downloading and installing. Once it's downloaded, you should see installing and then you should see open. So just keep pressing the back button on the remote control to go back to the main menu. And we need to go into downloader. So go across to the apps button there, go into it and then find downloader. Go into downloader, press the up button once to get our cursor flashing in the box, middle button, and then just type 212. 03. That's 21203. Then press the play pause button and hopefully after five seconds we should go to my website. Once you're there just scroll down and then we need to find this here remote ADB shell. So get your little red circle anywhere over the icon that blue icon middle button and if any ads come up just close them. So get your circle over close and then we should start downloading. OK, so I'm just going to go down to cancel and then across to install middle button. And then once it says app installed middle button and then go across to delete there to highlight that middle button, go across to the second delete there to highlight that middle button and then keep tapping the left hand side of the ring on the remote control till home's highlighted middle button back button twice. Now, this bit might not seem essential, but it is very, very important. Press the home button on the remote to go back to the main menu. Go across to the settings cog down to my fire TV and then down to restart middle button and restart your stick. So press the left part of the ring to go to restart middle button. Let it restart. This is very, very important and it will become apparent later because many people find in this next step when they're trying to make a remote ADB shell connection, it doesn't connect unless you've restarted your stick beforehand. So it's always a good idea at this point, like I say, to do a restart just like I have. So just be patient with it, but it will save you a lot of hassle later on. So wait for the stick to restart. Hopefully shouldn't be too long. There you go, mine's restarting already. And then we need to go across into apps again. So let's just go across there. And uh, then we need to go down to remote ADB shell. There you go, this one just here, middle button. And then it says generating RSA, RSA key pair. So middle button, and then we need to make sure that our cursors in the IP address or host name field, middle button, and we need to type in there 127.0.0.1. So that's 127.0.0.1. Then press the play pause button. Then hopefully here we should have already pre-filled in 5555. If it's already in there, then just press the play pause button and then just press the down button once so that connects is highlighted. It's a bit difficult to see, but it just goes slightly lighter when connects highlighted. Middle button, and there you go. You'll get this allow USB debugging. Now here, we need to put a tick in the box just to the left of always allow from this computer. So just press the middle button, then go down to OK, middle button. And then you should get a prompt come up. Mine says Mantis. Yours may say something different. So now what we need to do is we need to find out some more details about the app that we're trying to unlock, the app that we're trying to allow the system to uh, to give it full permissions to read and write files. So let's just press the home button on the remote control. That's the picture of the house and then go across to the apps middle button and we're looking for developer tools menu. So go into developer tools menu and then what we want to do is we need to switch on system X-ray just up there. 
and then back button on the remote control once. So we need to go into the app that we want to give permissions to. So I'm going to go into Explore, middle button, and then we should see, hopefully, in a few seconds at the top of the screen, the actual app name. That's just below the memory section there. So as you can see, mine says com.lonelycatgames.explore with a capital X. So write this down and make sure that you write it down exactly as it's shown on the screen, because this is very, very important. If you get something slightly wrong or you get a put a lowercase letter in place of a capital letter, then it ain't going to work. If you need to take a photo of it on your mobile phone so that you've got an exact copy in front of you. So what we're going to have to do now is we're going to come out of this. So press the back button once or twice to come out of it and then go back into developer tools menu and let's just turn system x-ray off press the back button to come out and then we're going to go back into remote adb shell and hopefully we should still be at this prompt here so we need to type this in exactly as shown on the screen here and perhaps i'll put a copy of this in the description of this video so we need to type cmd all in lowercase and then space app ops. So that's again all in lowercase a double p o p s space set. That's s e t all in lowercase once again space. And then we need to go into the symbols now and we need a couple of minuses there. So two minuses and then we'll go back to a b c and again in lowercase type in UID. Now there's no space between the two minuses and the UID. And then we put a space in again here. And here we need to put the name of whatever we saw on the screen below the memory bar earlier. So mine was com.lonelycatgames.com explore and I had a capital X in explore but the rest of it was all lowercase okay so it needs to be like I say exactly how it was shown at the top of your screen so double check this part triple check it quadruple check it if you need to so the next thing we're going to do is put a space in again and we need to put this in capitals now so we need to type manage and then an underscore so this one just here Again, continuing in capitals, type external and then go back to the symbols and again an underscore, go back to capitals, storage and then do a space and then go to lowercase and we need to type then allow. So once we've done that and you've double checked it, you've triple checked it, you've quadruple checked it, you're 110% happy that everything's okay press the play pause button on the remote and hopefully then that should allow full permission. And then we can just come out of this, just keep pressing the back button to come out and hopefully now our program will function fully. If it doesn't, then we need to do some further commands, which is very laborious. I'm not going to cover it in this video, um, but if you do need the other commands, these are where you need special access to the Android data and OBB directories. Go to AFTV News for full instructions on that. Search for how to grant apps special access to Android data and OBB directory files in Fire OS 8. So have a look for that. It was a article that was posted on the 1st of October 2023. So if you go there and uh, it's too much to search for, then just scroll down to the post that was posted on the 1st of October 2023. And that will give you full details there. I hope you like this video. And if you did, please have a look in the description down below. If you're in the market for a new Fire TV stick, Fire TV Cube or Fire TV accessories, or even looking to subscribe or change to a different VPN provider, please consider using the links down below as they really do help support this channel. They help me to dedicate more time into researching and bringing you these videos. And also whilst you're at my YouTube channel, 
why not stick around? I've got thousands of other videos right here, right now, covering all sorts of subjects. Hopefully, whilst you're here, you're going to find something to educate you, entertain you, amuse you, and maybe even save you some time and money.